Praise the Lord, and thank you for tuning in to another time of Kingdom Empowerment. I'm Pastor John Thomas, and I'm just so excited of the Lord that you decided to tune in today. But can I tell you, even though you think you decided to tune in, but I believe it was predestined by God for you to be watching at this time right now, because I believe this is a now moment with you and God. Amen. This is a visitation with you because I, I, I truly believe that God really wants to speak to you to get in and give you some insight on, on where you are in the spirit right now. I truly, I truly believe that. So I don't believe that it's by chance that, that you just happen to, to, to tune in at this particular time. Cause I, I'm a firm believer that, that nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. I believe that God has orchestrated this so that you can hear a word from God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. So I already know that God has a word for you. I know God is going to empower you today because, listen, that's what we're about, kingdom empowerment, empowering you for kingdom work. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, come on. You know how we do here on kingdom empowerment. We get right into the word. Amen. So <clears throat> begin to open your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 6. 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 6. Hallelujah. And while, and while you're turning your pages or looking on your tablets, amen, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for your people, Father God. Lord, I thank you for your presence being here with us. Now, Father, as we begin to get into your word, Lord, I ask that you would bring illumination and revelation to, to, to the hearer, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that will bring an, an immediate change, that will bring breakthrough, that will bring understanding, Father God, that will, where they will receive a greater depth of revelation of who you are and where they are in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you right now, Father God, that the devil is bound right now in the name of Jesus, and there's nothing that he can do about it. I thank you that your presence is with them right now. Your presence is filling the room, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that your word, when, it, when, it, when the Bible says that, that, that we're in the presence of the Lord, that means that we are face-to-face -face with you. So, Father God, I thank you, Father God, for a face-to-face with you as we begin to get in your word. Now, Holy Spirit, begin to speak to us. Speak through these lips of clay. I decrease so that you can increase. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. I, I want to talk to you, hallelujah, about a place called there. A place called there. Yeah, a place called there. Come on, you know, let's, let's, let's read. Let's read. First Kings, remember, first Kings chapter 17, verses one through six. It says, and I'm, and I'm reading out of the King James. It says, and Elijah, the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Galilee, said to Ahab, as the Lord lives, as, as, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be due nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away from there, get away, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherub, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Hmm. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherif, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Hallelujah. And he drank from the brook. First Kings 17 and 4 says, And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. That their place, that place called there, the place called there. You know, we, we, we see here in, in 1 Kings chapter 17, the first 
in the verses 1 through 6 where, where God specifically gave Elijah directions for his protection and his provision he could, so that he could only expect the provision if he obeyed God. Let me say that again. He could only expect provision or deliverance or whatever he needed if he obeyed God. Can I tell you that when you disobey the word of the Lord, you know, there's no protection there. Well, wait a minute. There's mercy and grace. Yes, there's mercy and grace. But what you could have gotten because of your disobedience, you know, you missed out on. Hallelujah. So can I tell you, it's a good day to obey God. Amen. <laughs> when God commands you to go into a their place. Well, what is where what is the place called there? Make that plain. What is the place called there? Well, the place called there is wherever God tells you to go, <laughs> wherever God tells you to be. That's the place of God there. Wherever God has directed you, wherever God has planted you, that's the place called there. Why? Because that that place called there is the place where he will protect you. That place called there is a, is a place where he will where he provide for you, where he will heal you, where he will deliver you. Hallelujah. Well, he will the place where he will work on you and get you together. That place called there. But can I tell you that? <clears throat> can I tell you that that their place is usually a place that you don't choose yourself or the place that you would have never even chose to be? That their place. <laughs> it's a place that God has chosen for us. You know, for example, the, the, their place for the prophet Jeremiah was the potter's house. In Jeremiah 18 and 1, it says, The word, the word which came to Jeremiah from the, from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Come on, your their place is also a place where he will speak to you. When God wants to really speak to you, he'll give you a particular directive. And he's to, he'll, or he may say, I want you to come up here. I want you to get away with me. Come and pray. Come on. Your prayer time is a their place. Hallelujah. Now, now, for Naaman, if you read about, if you read about Naaman in, in Kings chapter 5, Naaman had leprosy. But you want to know what his their, his their place was? The dirty Jordan. It was a place that he would have never even chose. But in that, but in his obedience to dip seven times in that nasty Jordan, he received his healing. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter five. I'm just and just just giving you the scriptures. Second Kings. Chapter 5, verse 14. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the sayings of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Now, if he was disobedient, he would still kept his leprosy. But because he obeyed and went to the place, come on, where God told him to go, in this, in this instant, Elijah, Elijah told him to go there, but God was speaking to speaking through Elijah to Naaman. Come on. See, because God still speaks through people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He'll still speak to a man. He'll, sp he'll speak to a woman. Come on. He'll speak to come on. He'll speak to the trees. He'll speak to a billboard. But God will speak to you. He'll speak to you in a dream. He'll speak to you through his word. He'll speak to you through a movie. Any, in other words, by any means necessary, if he needs to get a word to you, he's going to get it to you. But it's up to you to obey his instructions that he gives you because he's going to lead you to your their place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because God is the only one that knows where those their places are. Not you. Not this person, not that person, not your, not your pastor, not your... Come on, not your prophet. Come on. Only God knows those places. Now, God may speak through them, you know, to let you know that you're getting close to it. But God will ultimately lead you into that their place. Come on. When, when Jesus, 
Come on, when, when John baptized Jesus, Jesus, their place was the wilderness. Come on, when he was tempted of the devil for those 40 days, come on, that's, that's come on, your their place could be a wilderness where it's just you out there. You can't take nobody with you. Come on, Jesus didn't take nobody with him. He just went as he was led. Come on, the Bible says that, and the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. Hallelujah. Led, which means that he obeyed the Spirit of God, come on, and went into the wilderness where he was led, come on, and he was tempted of the devil. That was his their place. But when he came out of that their place, Hallelujah. When he came out of that, when he left that there place in his life, come on, he came out in power. Because I want, listen, I want to encourage you. Come on, you, your their place may be stormy weather right now, but if you just hang on, you hang on in there. Come on, when you come out of it, you're coming out of it in some power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. You know, I'll give you another, uh, another example. Moses, Moses, come on, I, I love Moses. Moses is one of my favorite uh, men of the Bible, but, but his their place was the cliff of the rock. <laughs> glory to his name. Moses desired to see the glory of God. He wanted, come on, he didn't want to feel it, he wanted to see it. Whew. My God. But his, his, his their place was the cliff in the rock. Exodus 33, 21 through 23. Exodus 33, 21 through 23. This is speaking about Moses. It says, and the Lord said, behold, that word behold means look. There is a place by me, hmm, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass while my glory passes by that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by and I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face you shall not see. Can I tell you that in, in those there places, come on, every there place in your life, catch this, every there place in your life is an encounter with God. Every their place in your life is an encounter with God. Well, well I'm in stormy weather with Jesus. He, he, he loves stormy weather, too, because he speaks to it and commands peace in it. Hallelujah. He teaches you lessons in the storm because he's with you in it. In that their place. Moses, their place was in the cliff of the rock. Verse 23 says, and I will take my hand away and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall you not be seen, shall not be seen. Can I tell you that also in that there place, God shows you another side of him? <laughs> God will, will begin to reveal to you uh, uh, different sides of himself. Come on, you may, you may know him as your savior, but he wants to show you that he's also not just your savior, but your healer. He wants to not just show you that he, he's not just your healer, he's your provider. Come on, he's your way maker. He's your peace giver. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. He will fight for you. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. God showed him on another side, which means that he gained a deeper Revelation, that word, uh, the word revelation means to reveal, to uncover. Come on. He got a deeper revelation of God in the their place. Hmm. Another example, Joseph. Hmm. Sometimes I feel sorry for Joseph, but it was all in his making. Joseph. had a dream, but his fair place led him to the palace. See, can I tell you that every their place, catch this, every their place in your life are, they represent the, the, the doorpost to your destiny or to the fulfillment of your assignment. 
See, because Joseph's first, their place was the pit. Then once, once he transitioned out of the pit, his next, their place was Potter's house. And I'm sure when he got to Potter's house, things began to start looking up for him until he, he ran into some craziness with Potter's wife, where she, where she uh, accused him of sexual misconduct. So once, so once he left Potter's house, the next their place he went to was prison. It's almost like it went from, from, from worse to all right looking up and then worse than the first one. And can I tell you, Joseph, he wasn't in prison for a couple of days. He was in there for some years. For a long time. But even in the midst of that time, in, it, in, in the midst of those their places, God was still dealing with Joseph. Come on, he was working on Joseph, just like God is working on you in the their places of your life. See, because after he left the prison, he went straight to the palace and was in second in command of all of Egypt. And he, would, and he became the deliverer of not the people, not just the people of Egypt, but of his own people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because he didn't whine and, come on, he didn't complain about the their places. They just happened in his life. But he learned to roll with the punches. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to just roll with the punches and trust God. God, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand everything what's happening but I know this is a their place. So whatever lesson I got to learn, whatever you got to kill in me, Lord, kill it so I can get to my next place. Come on, ultimate goal come on, is to fulfill my purpose. My ultimate goal is to fulfill the assignment that you have placed on my life. So if I have to go through the their places, I'm willing to go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. Joseph made it to the palace, y'all. <laughs> Can I tell you, even though you're going through this, going through this process, because really, uh, uh, when, when, you, when you hear someone preach about the process, really, they're talking about the their places in your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you watching right now, you in, you in some of those their places right now. See, see, the their place is the place where you didn't choose to be at. You just at. <laughs> Come on, you, you obeyed the word of the Lord, and you in a their place. Come on, the disciples obeyed Jesus. Jesus told them, go to the other side. But their being obedient to Jesus led them right into a storm. Their place. Why? Because the their places is where he teaches you. The their places is the places where he also blesses you. He shows you a greater insight of himself. Come on. The, and he, it, listen, Jesus, catch this. Jesus, their place, his final, their place was death. Come on, your, your, their, your their place may be a place where, where he's trying to kill something in you. Come on, maybe you got some pride issues. Maybe you got some habits that he needs to kill. So you're in this their place right now because he's trying to kill that in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But can I tell you, your their place, in order for you to go to your their place, it requires you to hear the voice of God, come on, and obey. Because like I told you at the beginning, your, the their places in your life are places that he tells you to go. Those are places where you didn't choose to be at. If it was up to you, you would have went somewhere else. Jonah's, their place was supposed to be Nineveh. He tried to go to Jaffa. It caused a storm. They threw him overboard. He was in the well for three days. And when he finally said, Lord, I go, and then he ended up in Nineveh, the their place. Hallelujah. 
I believe a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the drama that that we're dealing with is because sometimes God is saying, "I want you to go there," and the catch is, "Yo, there may be a geographical location." Oh, yo, there may be a spiritual location that you need to be. Maybe he's, he's saying, I want you to come up higher than me. I want, you to, I want you to spend time with me. Come on, you, you're too low. I need you to come up. Hallelujah. But I also wanted to tell you that your, the, the, their places are a place of obedience. Their, your, their place can also be a place of preparation where God will begin to prepare you for something. For something great, hallelujah, May, whether it be for ministry, whether it be for business. Listen, I'm, I'm a firm believer that God gives us gifts. You, you may have a, a gift in speaking. You may have a gift in, in, in writing and, you know, whatever, whatever your talent or gift is. But can I tell you, your skill you have to work on. So you can have a gift, like, for instance, you can have a gift to sing. But you'll be able to sing better if you practice preparation. So sometimes your their place can be a place of preparation. And can I tell you that, that if, you, if, you have, if you prepared yourself for the next place or the next opportunity when the door opens, you're qualified to walk through. But if you're not prepared, you disqualify yourself. How do I disqualify myself? Because I was disobedient and didn't go to the their place or that place of preparation that God was requiring. So the their places are important. They don't just prepare you, but they humble you. They don't just humble you, but... Through the humbling, it helps you to get close to God. And then as you get close to God, come on, you gain a a greater revelation of who he is. Come on, your revelation doesn't just stop at the pastor or the prophet or the apostle or the, come on, the teacher or the evangelist that comes into town. Come on. Your revelation of Jesus doesn't stop if your mama or your dad or your brother, your sister or your cousin or your co-worker or your friend. But the their places is the places where he reveals himself to you in a way that you didn't think was even possible. So you get a greater depth of revelation. The their place can be a place of cleansing. Come on, where he takes you through a time of deliverance in your life. Come on, you you got some things over the life that you picked up that, that needs to be filtered all the way out. So he cleans you out in that their place. And then after he cleans you out in that their place, come on, your next place is where he revives you. Come on, you you become alive. Come on, that's when revival happens. Some of us is praying for revival, you know, corporately. You, you, you say, oh, yeah, I, I want revival. Can I tell you, revival is not just um, jumping and shouting, clapping and running and good music. Speaking in tongues and following. No, 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 that's not revival. Real, true revival, catch this, is repentance. Hallelujah. But he revives us in their place. Glory to his name. He revives us. Can I tell you, before you can experience revival corporately, you have to experience, you have to experience revival personally. And it's in those their places where he does that. It's in those their places due to your obedience to go where he says go. It's in the their place where he prepares you to fulfill your purpose and your destiny. Listen, everybody's not called to to the ministry or to the pulpit, but we all are are called to the ministry of reconciliation, which means that you can tell somebody about him. But maybe maybe your purpose, maybe your calling is business. Maybe maybe, maybe you're called to be an entrepreneur. Maybe you're called to work in the government. Maybe you're called to, to, to work in the entertainment industry. Whatever you're called to do, there's always a place for preparation.
Hallelujah. Preparation, humbling, getting to know him, becoming close to him, getting a greater depth of revelation about him, then allowing him to cleanse you and revive you. Hallelujah. And get you together. One thing that I've come to understand that God will, he, he, he blesses you, he breaks you, and then he gives you. God can't give you until he, he breaks you. That's the process of God. And he uses the very places that he leads you to in your life so that he can accomplish those things. Listen, God knows what he put in you and he knows how to get it out of you and the way to get it out of you and to help you to rediscover it. So you think you're discovering, but really you're rediscovering it. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. He uses the their place. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. That place called there. Come on, stretch your hands to him. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for your people, Father God, that are in those their places. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you, Father God, that, that they... They're their place, whatever it is, Father God. Lord, I ask that they don't despise the their place, but now they have, they've got a greater understanding of the purpose of the their place in their life. And I thank you for what you're doing right now. Now, Father, those that may be sick in their body, Lord, I declare their healing now in the name of Jesus. I declare breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. Killing in your body. I command that disease to leave now in the name of Jesus. And that pain to go now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I give you praise for it now in Jesus' name. Come on, you don't have to have nobody call out your healing. Just, be, just believe and begin to do what you can do by faith. Hallelujah. Now, those of you that are watching, and you've, you've heard and you can identify with it their place, but you never received Jesus in your heart. Listen, all you got to do is just call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose from the grave for me. Now, Lord, I receive you and I submit my life completely under your lordship now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Listen, heaven is rejoicing. I'm rejoicing because you made the decision to come into the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And I'm rejoicing, not just because you're in the kingdom, but I'm also rejoicing that a lot of you have just gotten healed and gotten delivered and breakthroughs have taken place because you locked your faith with the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Listen, I love you. God bless you. Listen, I want you to come and visit us here at Kingdom Empowerment Ministries here in Port Huron. Our address is 2700 Pine Grove Avenue. I want you to come and, and enjoy service. Come experience with us. Come and fellowship with us. Come and experience the power of God live with us here in Port Huron. Our Sunday services start at 12 noon. And on Wednesdays, we have our recharge service. So come on out. I'm looking to see you. I love you. And I'll see you again next time for your Kingdom Empowerment. God bless.